Aloha everybody, welcome to Beach Walks with Rocks. Today is show number 129 and you can find us at beachwalks.tv. Ready? money topic has really generated a lot of comments and private emails to me and I think I've actually hit on a solution to some of the world's problems which you know I find very very exciting anyway I used a phrase the other day distribution of wealth and that's kind of I think for a lot of people who think capitalism and republicanism sounds like code word for socialism or communism and that's not what I intended I'm really somebody that can see both sides of an issue and I consider that, you know, a blessing and an onus at different times in my life. But nonetheless, here's the point today. If everybody made more money, then we wouldn't have to worry about welfare and Medicaid and taking care of people because everybody would earn more money and would be fully functional participants in the economic system. So how do we get people, everybody to earn more money? when we have business structures that are really driven more by greed rather than consciousness. And I think greed is an old brain, a limbic brain, a reptilian brain response. And consciousness is more of a, you know, forebrain. Consciousness happens when we have lots of data and we then can apply that data to real life situations and come up with better solutions. So. Here's, I'm, I really want to do a little bit of math for you today. So let's sit down on the beach. I'm going to get out my clipboard. Let's do a little bit of playing with the numbers and see what we can come up with. So I read in The Week, which is a weekly news magazine, that a study in the Financial Times reported that the average CEO makes $11 million a year and the average employee makes $42,000 a year. Now, Clearly, a lot of CEOs make way more than that, and of course, way less. A few make way less. And a lot of employees make way less than 42,000, but we're talking about averages here. So let's just do the math and see what that comes out to. So 11 million divided by 42,000. That means the average CEO makes 200 and 62 times what the average employee makes. And if you figure that the average person gets a two-week vacation, so they work 50 weeks a year times five days, that's 250 days, that means that a CEO makes more in one day than the average person makes in their entire year of working. Now, I don't happen to think that that's very fair. You know, I saw a Dilbert cartoon that I'll link to in the show notes and in the cartoon, Wally comes into the boss's office and uh, it's something about the, the, the CEO having gotten a $400 million bonus. And Wally said something about, can I have my bonus? And the pointy-haired boss says, well, the CEO is a million times more valuable than you, so of course he gets that big bonus. To which Wally says, well, can I have my $400 then? <laughs> can I at least have the pittance less that I'm worth, um, employees feel like they can't even get that. So what if we did an, a conscious business strategy which says we are going to not give away our money but we're going to reward and incentivize everyone who works in company A for their contribution to the company's success and profitability. So let's just say that the average CEO, we, we set a CEO salary in this company of $5 million. And let's say that that CEO is going to still make 50 times more than the lowest person. So if we take $5 million and we divide that, some of you can do the math already, you divide that by 50, that still means that the average employee would be making a hundred thousand dollars a year. So that's what we have. 
Now, at this level, there's still going to be money left over, and we still want, if this company is making a totally cool product, like Dilbert Cartoons, for example, that a lot of people want to pay money for, there's no reason that as much money as possible cannot flow into that company. The question becomes, where does the money flow out of that company? So if we have a policy that says the CEO doesn't make more than 50 times the lowest paid person, then everyone has an incentive to work hard to make that company successful. And given this relatively low structure for the CEO, but nice and adequate for the employee, there's going to be money left over. And that money then can go back into research and development. That money can go into dividends if it's a publicly held company, or it can go into bonus pay if it's a privately held company. And then lastly, and this is an interesting point, money can still be set aside for contributions or donations to organizations who are doing really wonderful things, but for which there may not be a sustainable financial business model. So we all agree that the arts and certain aspects of, of life really contribute to our quality of life, but there's people we haven't really figured out a way to monetize that. So some of that money could be set aside to contribute to that. But I do maintain that if all of the employees were making more, then we would have less need for welfare and we would have those employees being able to buy more goods and services. And I think that it would be a total economic win-win-win. So, you tell me what you think of Roxy's math lesson today here at Lanikai Beach. If you'd like to Skype the conch shell, you can do so at Roxanne Darling. And if you'd like to call the conch shell, you can call 949-544-1456. Aloha. solved one of the world's more vexing problems. Lexi and I are going to go for a swim. See you later.